happened? Did I doze off while editing? Oh, got a message. Well, let's see what this is about. What the? Complete a top five Halloween countdown about something dark within a given time. Failure to complete the list shall result in erasure. Well, if it's a creepy list you want, it's a creepy list you're gonna get. And I know just the topic to cover. Pokemon, the series where you capture and train these awesome creatures to become the very best like no one ever was. But for a series geared towards children, there is some weird, dark, and creepy stuff in this series that makes me question just how kid-friendly it really is. And that's what I'm counting down. These are my top five dark and creepy things in Pokemon. These dark and creepy things can range from anything in the series. A moment, an area in the games, specific Pokemon, eerie sounds and music, an NPC, a setting, a backstory, whatever. Just anything that manages to make me feel uneasy or creeped out as all heck. So with that said, let the chaos commence. The first generation. While I personally think it's the weakest generation of all, that doesn't mean I hate it. It's what introduced the world to Pokemon with its 150 monsters, memorable music, and some interesting locations, with one of the most standout locations being the one and only Lavender Town. The story of this town goes like this. Team Rocket invaded Lavender Town, kidnapped Mr. Fuji, and killed the resident Cubone's mother. Wait, 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 wait. They killed the Cubone's mother. In a kid's game. Rated E for everyone? More like rated E for explicitness. This town is also home to the Pokemon Tower, which is basically a giant Pokemon graveyard. The tower is haunted by ghosts, it's full of Chandlers who are possessed by ghosts, and before you can reach the top floor, you encounter the restless ghost of Cubone's mother, a Marowak. Only by defeating it can you calm this weary spirit. The music, at least in the original games, was a very unsettling tune, and the ghost sprite from the original is... Kinda creepy with that disturbing, derpy face, Ugh. But the reason why it's so low on the list is because in later games, the town's creepy factor kinda went away. Plus, I really wouldn't say this is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong, I still find the town to have a creepy factor to it. It's just, the only reason why this place can seem so disturbing is because of the weird creepypastas that have come from it. Seriously, just look up Buried Alive and Lavender Town Syndrome, and you'll know exactly what I mean. It's some very messed up crap, let me tell ya. In black and white, if you go to the Marvelous Bridge, there's a chance you'll encounter a mysterious ghost girl. An old woman tells of a girl who used to play with her Abra during a time before Marvelous Bridge was built. Fast forward to black to and white too, you'll come across the Strange House which is a house known for a sad incident that is said to keep people away. The inside of this house is an absolute wreck, making you ask questions like, why is this house in ruins? What happened to the people who lived here? Why are the bookshelves downstairs talking about Dream Eater Pokemon? And Cresselia? And Darkrai? And for goodness sake, why are those objects moving? This is some really messed up sh- As you explore the house, Furniture that was blocking your path earlier suddenly moves out of your way for you to explore more. And then, you find the ghost of a girl who rambles on about an everlasting dark dream. And then she asks where her mom, her dad, and her... Wait, Abra? Don't tell me. Is this the same girl? Yep. And when you run into the girl again, she'll talk about how she supposedly heard her father's voice telling her to stay with him and forget about the Lunar Wing. Hmm, Lunar Wing. You mean the thing that has to deal with Cresselia? So you reach the final room and discover... a Lunar Wing. Only to have the Ghost Girl appear again, explaining to you that she was waiting on Marvelous Bridge to return the Lunar Wing to Cresselia. And then she vanishes. So... what exactly happened here? It's obvious the girl died before she returned the Lunar Wing to Cresselia, but how did she die? Well, while it hasn't been confirmed, it's assumed that Darkrai killed her with its power of inducing nightmares in people's sleep. 
it makes sense that it would be Darkrai since the girl says, Everlasting Dark Dream. And the voice that the girl thought was her father's could have actually been Darkrai trying to keep her away from the Lunar Wing, which is said to get rid of nightmares. This is easily one of the darkest and most disturbing moments in Pokemon I've seen so far. And what makes it even more disturbing is the fact that it's all up to speculation as to what happened to the girl. It's shocking to even think what could have actually happened to this innocent child. May she rest in peace. It wouldn't be a dark and creepy Pokemon list without bringing up the Pokedex. You could literally make a top 10 list from just disturbing Pokedex entries alone. But since Jay Witz already does this, I'm just going to talk about the ones that creep me out the most. Specifically, the Pokedex entries of the Chandelure line. Reading these entries really make me question why these games are rated E. Litwick's Pokedex entry states that it pretends to be a guide in the dark, when it's really just absorbing the life force of those that follow it to fuel the light on its head. Considering the Celestial Tower and the previously mentioned Strange House are full of Litwick and a bunch of trainers, yeah, I don't want to think about what could happen. Lampent appears right when someone dies and takes their spirit away. They even so much as hang around hospitals for patients to die. So you're telling me the light that people see when they die is actually this lamp with arms? Man, no wonder people say not to go into the light when someone is about to die. Come on, man. Don't tell me you're scared of a little light. Your username references Kingdom Hearts for frick's sake. Didn't you say you liked the element of light? Well, yeah, but... Have you been a sham all along? <clears throat> no. I am the Keyblade Warrior of Light, Chaos, and Shout. I am the Keyblade Warrior of Light, Chaos, and... Oh no, a lamp! <laughs> it's scary! Okay, I think you've overstayed your welcome. Goodbye. And then there's Chandelure. Its white Pokedex entry says that being consumed in its flame burns up the spirit, leaving the body of that person behind. So let me get this straight, Dexter. You're telling me these living, floating light fixtures leave behind dead corpses? That's messed up! And when these spirits get burned up by its flame, they lose their way and wander the world. Forever. Yeah, suddenly I don't want this Pokemon on my team anymore. Scary light fixtures, no! I said go away! <laughs> when you think of Johto, the word scary isn't really something that comes to mind since there's really not that many places that could be considered unsettling, with the exception of one area, the ruins of Alf. Now I know what you're thinking, the ruins of Alf scary? It's more of a tourist site than anything else. Yeah, well, solving those puzzles only to be dropped in some random spot in the ruins full of floating letters is kind of unsettling if you ask me. Heck, I even find those ruins that have the unknown spell a message to be disturbing. But if you ask what really creeps me out in this area, it's this. What even is this? Is this supposed to be the unknown? If so, what are they chanting? Is it some sort of message? Is it some sort of chant that's invoking some kind of spell? If so, what is the spell gonna do? This really creeped me out as a kid. And it's still pretty unsettling today. And you know what? I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. Changing the channel now! That's better. By now, you can see just how dark and creepy the Pokemon series can be at times. So what could possibly be number one? While the previous entry made me feel uneasy, at least you can change the radio signal to something else. Whereas number one, it has to be seen in its entirety if you find it. And it's something that legitimately creeped me out when I saw it. Wow.
What the f Yay. just happened? I was just exploring the city, seeing what I could find in every corner and building, only to stumble upon this random building and enter the elevator to reach the next floor. And then, this happens. The music stops, I can't seem to move, and then, this... This hex girl creeps the freak out of nowhere and says, No, you are not the one. Yeah, quick question. Who even is this hex girl? And what is she even doing here? Actually, why is she even here? Come to think of it, there's a hex girl in Hotel Rich... Rich, whatever you call it, who's listening to the elevator. Is this girl gonna do the same thing to another person coming out of the elevator? Wait, is this the same girl? Or are there just a ton of these hex girls stalking people coming out of elevators? What really creeps me out about this is the hex girl's model isn't even animating. Combine that with the fact that the music stops and your character doesn't move, it gives the impression the game is glitched. And we all know how creepy glitches can be. I don't know what else to say here. This event came the heck out of nowhere, and it is by far the most disturbing and downright creepiest thing I have seen in Pokemon. I'm ChaosKey4013, and watch where you explore, because, well, you never know what's lurking behind you until it's too late. Phew, just in time. All right, I played your little game. One now. Excellent, now you are ready. Attached to this message is a document that has but a username written on it. This is my Skype username. You are to go on Skype, find this username, and add it to your contacts. I'll accept your request, and then I'll show you your next task. <laughs>